Kuo Wei. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for, for doing this. Um, we're uh, trying to build a history of ICANN, and uh, you're one of the people who's been involved in ICANN for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, one is an easy question, and one will be a little more interesting. So the easy question is, uh, describe for us uh, your basic involvement, when you started, how you got involved, and what you've done, been doing. And that'll uh, set the stage for a more interesting discussion. Actually, I'm involved in uh, the ICANN is, uh, before ICANN's form. Mm -hmm. I was in the Boston pre-meetings uh, pre uh -huh. in the 1998. And the reason I was involved is because in the 1995, there's an APNIC uh, started, and we are helping the APNIC to run the institution and also establish the institution in Australia. And because uh, APNIC is uh, one of very founding member of the ICANN, mm -hmm. so there's reason why I start involved in the ICANN near pre meeting in the Boston 1998. And the most interesting is uh, the first meeting in Singapore in 1999. And I was involved in a couple of funny things. The first of all is uh, the ICANN GAC organizations, how they set it up. And they are talking about the bylaw. And I was involved with uh, Paul Truman. And another interesting in the Singapore in 1999, I think Steve, you might be known as IDN. The IDN actually start in 1999 in Singapore as a buff, is an international domain names. Mm -hmm. And that is a just a very beginning, mm -hmm. the people talking about it. And for the last 56, I can meet in, I believe, I joined at least 40, 45, hmm. at least 45 of them. I miss some of them is because uh, in the early days, uh, I was working for ASA Inc., the PC company. The company do not allow me to, oh, <laughs> to go to the international meeting, no related to uh, the PC business. Uh -huh. So for example, I didn't go to Rwom. I didn't go to the Egypt, the first I Cairo meetings. Mm -hmm. So I missed some of them, but I participated most of the ICANN meetings. Mm -hmm. um, f fill in uh, a couple of pieces for me. Um, how did, uh, what was your role in APNIC? Uh, and, and also I think uh, it'd be good to hear uh, something about your background. I know you spent some time in the U.S. and you have a very solid technical background and I'm sure that played a role in in how you got involved and what your position was and, and uh, that led into dealing with ICANN matters. Okay, I, um, well, first of all, I'm not as uh, solid technical as you are, <laughs> yeah. you know, because uh, my background is uh, in a supercomputer, mm -hmm. you know, in the crazy research. I'm doing the architecture, architect That's also pretty solid. compiler. Well, but not networking. Yeah. I've never been a networking people. Yeah. And I was really involved in this uh, internet related, actually it's uh, started in 19, I think 1990. I don't forget about the time. You might be remember it's a Mosaic, uh -huh. the first Mosaic design. The reason is uh, Mosaic is uh, coming out from the University of Illinois, Urbana mm -hmm. Japan. And the, the, the Mosaic designer, he said, Professor is my friend. When I visit a uh, you know, uh, University of Illinois in Urbana Champagne, or Joseph, and Joseph told me, say, I bring my, my student to show you something exciting. Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, Mark Anderson come uh -huh. up. He showed me the Mosaic. Mm -hmm. And then a lady, uh, when I back to Taiwan, I told myself, I'm not going to write a compiler anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to go into the internet. Mm -hmm. And so when I back to the Taiwan, I started uh, to build the internet in Taiwan. Mm. I was one of the founders to build an academic networking 
connect more than 400 institutions in Taiwan. 400? 4,000, sorry, 4,000. 4,000? From elementary school to graduate school. 4,000 institutions? Yes. On the, on the, on the on island the of island. Taiwan? Yes. I didn't know there were that many. <laughs> yeah, and everyone is connected to the internet. Wow. And my institution is a national supercomputing center in Taiwan. I see. We pro provide a backbone. And the reason doing that, I think you remember in the early day, the NSF connect the full supercomputing center to build an NSF net. Yes. So after they, we build a Taiwan Academic Networking, I participate in a, the very first APNIC meeting. And so I, you know, in the early day, we always show what you can tell the internet your local community you did. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I present the Taiwan Academic Networking how we can connect all the you know institution from school up to the graduate school, you know, four thousand institutions all together, you know, under the government government budget, and all the professor, all the computing center, including the school teacher, was involved, and so that is a uh, uh, I start up for this kind of project. So from there, I connect to the internet from Epinic and then go to the ICANN. Wow. Um, uh, what year was this academic network in Taiwan? What period of time? Uh, that is a uh, very early day, I think it's uh, 1992. Really? Yeah, 1992. And what speed were these lines? At that time, we're using a you know, T1 line. T1? T1 as a big bone. Uh -huh. Yeah. T1 in 1992. Is quite advanced. Yes. And I remember in the 1993, no, 1994, we upgrade T1 to T3. Wow. The 40 megabits. Yes. You remember that. You know, so ladies are how we develop in that. And of these 4,000, you got me interested in this. Yeah. Uh, because I, uh, uh, 1992, I got my uh, uh, daughter's school attached to the uh, internet, yeah. and the speed was a lot less at the time. What, uh, uh, what speeds were the, uh, were the elementary schools and the high schools? Elementary school actually is uh, using the dial more than mm -hmm. 56K. Yeah. You know, because in that day, it's, uh, 56 is quite good enough. Yeah. You know, and so the school is uh, 56, but for most uh, major national university or graduate school actually connect with uh, Backbone is also is T1. T1. Mm -hmm. In the 1992. Mm -hmm. And in the 1994, 95, the Backbone is a T3, but they connect in the T1 too. Right. So right. it's quite good. I remember in the 1994, 1995, I was going to the APNIC meeting. We present that. And so we demonstrate you know, from the networking structure, topology, and particularly how to operate it. Yes. Because uh, you need to coordinate with a lot of people. Right. 4,000 institutions. Yeah. So you need to coordinate, including the school teachers. And the school teacher, most of them, they don't have experience about the networking. So you have to write an operation guide for them with the graphic, and they know how to connect. <laughs> so they said, exciting. know. So uh, my experience with that sort of thing is that uh, uh, the teachers are busy with a lot of things, and yes. they, so, uh, but usually there's a student or come a, a couple of students that spend all their time on this <laughs> and rapidly become very expert at this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, actually, you might be to remember, during the 1990s or year, early of 2000. Actually, students are smarter than teachers. Yes. <laughs> Particularly in the, in the networking or internet. And in that early day, in the 1994, 95, more than that, actually, I even go to China to help the China, you know, academic cynic to establish CNIC. Mm -hmm. So, from 1994 
Sienik and Tidab Nenik, we are very good friends mm -hmm. because we help them to establish how to run the Sienik to, you know, to operation, not only the IP address, also the CCTLD, the CN. Yes. You know, and so for a long time, they still have a connection and visit each other. So you mentioned uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, CCTLD um, in Taiwan, that's .tw. Yep. In China, it's .cn. Yep. When did each of those get started? Oh, TW is started about 1990, 1990, quite early, because we got the assignment from John Postel. Yes. You remember that? And the CN, I think it's about one or two years later, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, they call the internet founder of the China. He's a professor Chen, he's a not Chen Walin. He's a Chen Tenpai. He's a previous director of the Community Center in uh -huh. Academic Seneca. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, he died in the heart attack. Mm. And then Chen Walin took it over. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a Chen Tenpai, he applied the Dacian from John Postel. Uh -huh. So that is about one or two years different between the, the TW and the Dacian. Yeah. But the major difference is uh, in the very early day, during the 1991 to 1994, 95, before the people still using the dial-up modem, China tried to set up separate internet as a domestic and international. Usually they call it the 168 and 162. You, you dial the 162, mean you are connected to the domestic 168 you tie up is connected to the international. Mm -hmm. But after 1996, the internet, you don't need to tie up anymore. Right. So the whole thing is changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. So that's another whole story about China. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, uh, I wanted to explore this because uh, this fills in uh, how a, a bit about the background about how you got involved with APNIC. Yep. And from AP Nick, you got involved with ICANN. Yes. And uh, and you mentioned the the IDNs were uh, a lively topic right from the beginning. Yes. So that's something that uh, I think is another story that we want to explore over a period of time. Uh, I said I was going to ask you two questions. I've spent a lot <laughs> of time on the on the first question yeah. about background. Um, uh, I think what's most interesting is getting beyond the who did what when, yeah. is to dig into um, the why and the how of things. And uh, so let me ask, what are the important or um, um, interesting or even annoying uh, mm -hmm. things that come to mind when you think about the history of ICANN um, and pieces that you know mm -hmm. well? What, what kinds of things come to mind? I think, uh, let me talk about IDM first. Okay. Okay. Because I was involved in IDM quite, not in the technical, but in the policies. Yeah. I told that this IDM is uh, initiated in the very first meeting of ICANN, mm -hmm. 1999 in Singapore. In the first two years, actually, it's a big fighting about IDM. For, from two different directions. Mm -hmm. The one direction is uh, put IDN as a proprietary system. Mm -hmm. It's not go to the ITF. Mm -hmm. They file the patent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the company call is a uh, IDNA, whatever. I don't uh, kind of like that. I don't agree. So, I talked to several of the other people. For example, the China Taiwan. Japanese, Korean. We think about IDN should go to the public domain mm -hmm. as a, through the ITM. So as a public interest should not be driven by a single pump company as a parent. So at that time, the Japanese, uh, Konishi-san, 
the Professor Kornishi from KDD. He asked me to coordinate the people. Mm -hmm. So I go to find the technical people in Taiwan. I talk to the people in China. I talk to the people in Korea and also uh, Japanese. The first meeting called JET, Joint Engineer Task Force. Yes. There is in the ICANN, Yokohama meeting. Hmm. There is, a, I think it's a year 2002 or something, something like that, or 2001 in Yokohama. And I met the, you know, the Joint Engineer Task Force to establish. This was in Yokohama, this was an ICANN meeting or this was an IETF oh, meeting? Oh, sorry, you're right, IETF meeting. Yeah. IETF meeting, yeah. And so we do that in there. After that, they run the meeting every quarter, mm. very intensely. Yes. And then eventually, you know, they go to the ITF to bring the idea in as an IFC. Yes. And when we're talking about how to bring the idea into the ICANN, we have a policy issue happen. And uh, Konishi and the JET people ask me how to approach. Uh -huh. And there is a coming back, it's uh, interesting also related to the ICANN. It's the ICANN meeting in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. I talked to the John Kensing, he's uh, your friend. Mm -hmm. I talked to the John Kensing, say, John, how we can resolve it? Mm -hmm. And John say, okay, I set up a meeting with you and Vincent, and three of us, we you know, sit together to talk about how to bring the IDM policy yeah. into the ICANN. Yeah. I still remember Vincent asked me first, say, why we need a non ESCI? Really? <laughs> yes, in Melbourne meeting. And John, John Kensing actually stand next to us. You know? So and I explained to them, and I also explained to them to Vin, say, this is a public domain, it's a public interest, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, with John Kensing's help, Vin, to be convinced, it is a good time to bring a uh, policy discussion in ICANN. Mm -hmm. So that is how let it happen. IDN, of course, spans uh, yeah. many, many scripts, languages, and so forth. And so this is the, uh, the northern, uh, northern Asia, I guess, yeah. or northeastern Asia. I, I know a little, but I don't know everything about this. Um, underneath all of this was mm -hmm. Unicode. Yeah. And we're talking about a portion of the Unicode table. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Is that right? Yes. And um, the uh, IDN is the mapping from Unicode into the normal ASCII because that's the way the uh, uh, DNS was built. Yeah. And that mapping, uh, I, I'm not sure I know the full history of it, but uh, I uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it went through some multiple stages. Oh, yeah. Actually, one of most... Uh, Interesting during the development is I don't want to name the person's name. One of the people in Europe, he said we don't want the two bico, we just want the seven bits. Yes. You know, and he even complained, say, if any two bytes send it to me, I will treat it as junk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but somehow, even the European they accept now. So oh. it's interesting. You are right, actually, in the very early day, we are fighting from seven bits to the two bytes mm -hmm. because the Unicode is, uh, cannot be triggered by seven bits. And for the two bytes, at the very beginning, we have uh, some question about, for example, like email. Some of the people cannot recognize the right. two bytes of the email address. So they argue for a while, really, very long time, several stage to go through. Yeah, the um, the way it is today, uh, there's a quite sophisticated encoding, yeah. um, and uh, I remember when I was introduced to that, I was quite impressed that uh, first of all with the quality because it, it it was relatively short, yeah, very efficient, and I was. Also impressed because having spent a lot of time in the IETF processes and working with people, I was uh, 
uh, I didn't think that something of that complexity, even though it was absolutely <laughs> right, could be sold through the uh, social processes in the ITF. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah. I thought that was a big hard Yeah, that's point. true. Actually, when the IDNFC is going to be formal, I still remember in the IDF some people against that. Yeah. Because of the first version of our IDN, we put a table into the, the DNS. Mm -hmm. And many engineers in the IETF don't like that. Mm -hmm. They don't think you should put a table into the DNS. Mm -hmm. So the second version is being improved. You don't need a table in there. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, you're right, there's uh, several stages. But one thing, unfortunately, didn't happen. Actually, after idea in the IFC, John Cleansing, he recommended go further to do the directory services. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, those are engineers after four years fighting, they exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to continue to do that. If we keep following the John Cleansing suggestion from the IDN RFC, go to the director service. I think the idea will be much easier than we are facing today. Uh -huh. But too bad, because you need the resources, you need an engineer commitment. So I want to uh, uh, just make a note that uh, the IDN story and some more details uh, is something that we may want to follow up on another mm -hmm. time. And the other is you mentioned John Clemson, who is uh, uh, another one of the old timers who's yeah. been around forever that we should definitely uh, grab hold of and uh, listen to him for a yes. while. Yeah, uh, No question about that. Um, is there more you want to say about IDNs or should we go on to something oh, else? Oh, we, we can move to the ICANN or APNIC. Yeah. <laughs> or the ICANN structure or something like that. Talk about that. So. Okay. Uh, I can talk about one of the history interesting for all of us. If you remember in the very beginning, the ICANN structure have a large. Before the large, we try to figure out how to get involved our individual user. Yes. Participate in the ICANN. You might be remember we go through the online voting. Yes. That is the Andrew. Andrew put it up. Yes. And it's kind of interesting actually. During that time, uh, when we are doing the voting, I almost be appointed from Asia Pacific region. Really? Because uh, in the Asia Pacific region, two person got a major vote. Hmm. One is a uh, uh, Kato san. Mm -hmm. Remember Kato san from Japan, mm -hmm. and another one is me. Our vote is about forty-five, fifty-five. Mm -hmm. So cut out some fight to Taiwan and say, go away, do you allow me to be the board first? Mm -hmm. And next time next I can time support you. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I say, okay, go ahead. You know, so I almost be the ICANN board mm -hmm. much earlier in the yeah. 2003 or 2004. Mm -hmm. talk, talk more now about the beginnings of ICANN and how you got involved in the APNIC uh, and, yeah. uh, and what the formative issues were uh, where were the big um, question marks? And uh... Uh, actually, in my personal case, I can talking about APNIC also talking about CCTOD Good. stuff because I involved both. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time I was a uh, kind of representative of NIC, also participating in APNIC. So I think in the early day, for example, 1999, and to the IG. I came Berlin meeting in Germany. We have a serious discussion about the charging model. Mm -hmm. You know, how the IRR pay for ICANN, how the CCDOD pay money to ICANN, how to establish the relationship between the CCDOD and ICANN, and also the APNIC. So I think that is a, for APNIC point of view, I think. You might know that at the very first time, the IR talking about how we can establish the relationship with ICANN. 
Should we sign the contract with ICANN one by one? Mm -hmm. Or all together is uh, uh -huh. one institution. Yes. So you know eventually it's go to the NRO. Yes. We set up the kind of paper company and now put all the fire are together as a single window to talk to the ICANN. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, I think we spent almost two or three years, mm -hmm. quite a long time to talking about, serious talking about that stuff. Another one is the CCTLD is another big issues. I remember in the I can believe meeting also in the Germany. We, the CCTOD person, squeezing in a very tiny room, really tiny. I remember more than half of the people have no chair. Really? You have to stand. And some of the people actually stand outside of the door and let the door open and they can shout him inside, you know because the room just too tiny. Mm. And then they start talking about many models, for example. First, how to build a legal relations. Second, how to charge. And some people will say, based on the registration. Some people will say, no, we don't want to do that way. And some people will say, we, sign, we want to sign a legal contract. But some people say, no, CCTLD is sovereignty. We not belong to ICANN, you know. So in the Berlin, and after several meetings, it's really a lot of debate. And even until four or five years after, it's no unique or consensus, as you know. When was the Berlin meeting? Berlin meeting, I think, is a 2001. Mm -hmm. Or 2000, it's 2001. I think 2000 or 2001, mm -hmm. very, very early, first time. And I still remember the, uh, the hotel is a luxury hotel, but the room is so tiny, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, this business of uh, the relationship with ICANN um, and, and charging and so forth uh, persists even to this day. Yes. Now, the other thing that is even more important than the charging is the authority. Yes. And uh, you mentioned the sovereignty, which is, so, a, which yeah. is a, a, a big word. That, yeah. uh, and even today, that's not... Uh, it's sort of, not yeah. Uh, uh, RFC 1591 uh, was attempt to set some of this. Uh, that predates all this, right? That, that goes back earlier? Yes. I don't remember exactly, but John Postel was part of that, so it was before then. Um, sorry. So um, it would be very interesting to hear um, what the different points of view are. Um, of course, ICANN was at that, by that time uh, running the IANA function. Yeah. And so every CCTLD is dependent upon and had to, uh, had to work with ICANN yep. if it wanted to change to yep. its entry into the root zone. Yeah, that's true. And so there was a certain amount of leverage, to be honest, yeah. that ICANN could try to exert. And yet at the same time, um, ICANN was a young organization and it wasn't clear what the rules were. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually. In the very early day, day you, you know that the CCTLD is very diverse. For example, in the very beginning, before the ICANN and the early four or five years of the ICANN, the CCTLD in the very early day actually running by academic, mm -hmm. including the Dutch JP, mm -hmm. including the Dutch CN, including the Dutch TW including even the that AU. Yes. <laughs> you know, <coughs> and at that time, many of the CCTOD manager, we don't think we are belong to government. Mm -hmm. And even in Japan, the same thing. In Japan, in the very beginning, as you know, the Jumrai, uh, they run the JP, but later on they find it. Uh, the CCTOD actually can generate the income by itself. Mm -hmm. So the Japan, I think in the early of the 1990, maybe 2000, 
they decided to separate the JP Nick and the JPIS. Yes. The reason is that Jim, Jim Ryan say, JPIS you can make money, but JP Nick is not. Mm -hmm. So they separated. Although the JP Nick is still a major shareholder of the yes. JPIS. In Taiwan, we're talking about that. But eventually, we didn't happen. And when we're talking about how to develop the relationship with ICANN, I think you remember in the very, very first relationship, if I remember correctly, is Australian. Australian signed the three parties contracts. Mm. The government, Australian Nick, and ICANN, mm -hmm. and JPIS and TW Nick follow it. Oh, I see. And as you know, the CNIC didn't sign a contract. Right. The CNIC only agree is to have uh, some kind of memorandum. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, they insist there's a sovereignty. Yes. And particularly CNIC is uh, belong to academic Seneca. Mm. It's part of government yes. uh, structures. So even today, as you mentioned, the CCTOD is not the single entity. Right. You know, some of them still commercial, some of them still NGO, some of them is government party. So it's quite diverse. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, what what happened? What's your recollection of what happened with the idea of the CCTLDs paying money to ICANN? Well, I think uh, this. Uh, Couple of things. First of all, I think it's a difficult. Is if the people claim the CCTLD is a sovereignty issue, well, of course, the CCTLD manager, for their personal interest, they don't want to pay any money. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? Why, why? I want to pay them? Yeah. yeah. And particularly, the major argument is. Uh, for example, the DNS of the CCTLD running by CCTLD organization itself. Mm -hmm. and, but I think the most critical part, or main, most of the important governance issue between the CCTLD and also the ICANN, we should be talking about how we can have a consistent, consistent policy mm -hmm. between the GTLD and CCTLD uh -huh. regarding for the domain operations. Mm -hmm. For example, if we say the red cross should be reserved as IBR, it's only apply on the G right. or we should apply on the CC also. Right. But it seems like it's very difficult to push the CC to follow it. Two reasons, I believe, my personal point of view. Of course, uh, if you ask my personal opinion, I really suggest it should be consistent yes. between the G and the CC. Right. But it's difficult, it's, uh, first of all, CC continue to claim their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. The second problem, the difficulty is uh, not all the CC TOD participate in the ICANN meeting. Right. Because, uh, if you look at the CCTOD, how many of them, how many of them is joining the CC and so? Yes. So I think the difficult part for the CCTOD is um, they are clear about the sovereignty. The second of all, I think the problem is the uh, CCTOD is not all of them is in the CC and so. But for the consistent and uh, reasonable, the policy should be consistent, yes. no matter GOCC. And if I remember, I say that before I was a board member and also after the board member, you might be remember in a Nairobi, I can, no, I think it's a IGF Nairobi meeting. When we talk with uh, NDI, uh, uh, what's Larry, I think the important thing for ICANN to be grow as mature, mm -hmm. we should invite as many as possible government into our gig. Yeah. We also need to invite 
as many as possible of the CCTLD into the CNN, yeah. CCNSO. Yes. Without they participate into the ICANN structures, we cannot claim we are global, we are worldwide. Right. And I'm very happy. I'm very happy after Nairobi till now. Yes. We are 169 government into the GAC. 169. Yeah. If you remember in the Nairobi, we are less than 80. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Uh, 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 but if we compare with the CCNSO in Nairobi until now, honest, not much and more. How many, um, how many CCNSO? I believe it's still less than 100. I see. So I think it's very important for the future progress mm -hmm. of the ICANN is try our best to bring the CCDOD in to the ICCNSO in our operations. So uh, this reminds me of something that's been on my mind for a while. Uh, ICANN has been pushing to get a lot of participation. When I think about it from, the, uh, from a CCTLD operator, um, it's a big deal to go travel a long distance and so forth. I fully agree. And there are some very vibrant, very robust regional groups, center in Europe, yeah. of course, yeah. Uh, but all around the world, uh, APTLD yes. and uh, uh, other places. What's your view about the relationship of those kinds of organizations versus ICANN in terms of serving the needs of the uh, CCTLD community? I think you're right. APTLD and also like uh, you know uh, the, the the you know the you know, European. I think the dif difference is. Um, in their organization, like APTOD, most of the time they are sharing experience, but they didn't really grow into the policy discussion. Uh -huh. At least, as I know, in yes. APTOD. In APTOD, the meeting, continue just sharing experience. Uh -huh. I actually talked to them many times. You should in, you know, improve from sharing experience, go into the policy discussions. Yeah. If they are not going to the policy discussion, then it's still very diverse. Yes. Or running independence. Yes. And you still didn't see the past policy consistency, particularly for the global internet governance. Yeah. I don't think that is the right way, you know. Interesting. Of course, this is my personal view. That's what I want to hear. I want to ask uh, one more question related okay. to the numbers, um, which uh, might be the beginning of a long discussion, but yeah. I, we'll, we'll keep it very short. You mentioned that uh, there was a discussion about whether all of the uh, RIRs would individually sign or whether they'd yeah. sign all together, and out of that came the creation of the NRO. Yeah. Now, I heard one version of that story sitting where I was, and I'm sure there's a different version of the story. Uh, what, what was the nature of that decision uh, from where you were sitting? Actually, at the time I'm the AP Nick EC, yeah. we're talking about for several years how we develop in the relationship with ICANN. And of course, as you know, I think for the IR for a long time, we are thinking about what is the relation we should develop mm -hmm. with ICANN, particularly, as you know, AINA yes. operations. Let me say at least once upon a time, we even talking about we can run a number by ourselves yes. without AINA. If you ask my personal opinion and what I suggest to APNIC, what I suggest to the IR and now, yep. my personal view is uh, number and name should not separate my personal yes. point. My reason is this. In the early day, the number or name or internet was still in the 
you know, child, child food. Early days. And we still have a lot of big pressure from outside world. If we don't unite, if we don't work together, cooperation, we are very easy to beat off. Yeah. And I think I told them there will be tragedy for us, for number, for name, and for the internet, even for the end user. Yeah. So even my voice is just one of them into the Happy Nigga and our own. So I suggest them we should try our best unless I can is not a good institution yes. to work with. Yes. And to be honest, in some pattern of time, we don't think I can is a good institution to work with. Yeah. You know, you have a history, you know that some of the I can see new manager, you know, or some of the board member is very unfriendly to IR mm -hmm. for the number. But even in the case, I still told them, do our best yeah. to stay with. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, I'd like to bring a short one minute to cover that yeah. one. There's an I can meet in Katagena, if you remember in Katagena. Yes. I bring the issue to the ICANN board. That is my second board meeting in ICANN. I told all the ICANN board members, I say, if you are not going to the ASO meeting, you are fail yes. to be the ICANN board. Yes. Then you bring a negative message to the number community. Although I do my best to ask all the number community, all the IR CEO, to come to the Katagena. Because before the Katagena in the Brussels meeting, those IR CEO say we don't want to the we don't want to come to I can meet it anymore. Huh. I convinced them to come. So if you remember in the Katagena, how many I can board in the ASO meeting? Nineteen of them. That's I'm good. happy. That's good. It's good. Yes. Thank you very much. Yep. It's been a real pleasure. And I'm good. sure there's more that we should talk about. Yeah. All right. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chloe.